Well, hello everybody. This is Chris back again with The Ancient Scholar. So today I'm going to talk about um, one concept real quickly. I've uh, actually gotten a few questions on this, and that is the concept of flow and using flow to calculate the inspiratory time, inspiratory time, um, on a patient who's, who's uh, perhaps uh, receiving mechanical ventilation or w will be receiving mechanical ventilation in, in the case of the, uh, the, the class and, and the people in question. And I think this is a very important concept uh, to, to master, and that really is that the flow of gas does dictate um, what our inspiratory time will be. And if you, you look at flow and you think about what flow is, flow, the, the definition of flow, if you will, is really defined as how quickly the tidal volume is delivered. Now, we will often set what's known as, as, as an inspiratory time into the ventilator. And say pressure control ventilation will set one second, for example, as our inspiratory time. And the ventilator will deliver a volume or um, often a pressure. And it will take about a second <laughs> to deliver that volume or to get to that pressure. And when we talk about volume control ventilation, um, if I have a certain flow set in volume control ventilation, um, the question is, with just a flow and just a tidal volume, am I able to retrieve or am I able to figure out what the inspiratory time is? And the answer to that question is, is should be a resounding yes. And um, this really becomes a, a, a question of applied mathematics. <clears throat> okay, let's go ahead and talk about this, this problem of flow and time. And in math, there's something known as a function. And basically what a function is, it's a, it's a relationship. And I think at this point we should recognize that um, time, or uh, that I time, we'll say, inspiratory time, is a function of flow, uh, and vice versa, depending on how you look at it. And that is to say that flow will dictate my I time. So whatever this is here, my flow, will dictate whatever my I time is. And it's just a matter of, of appreciating that relationship. So what? I just have a question here, and what I'm asking is, if I have a flow of 60 liters per minute, and my ventilator is going to deliver 500 mils a breath, the tidal volume, we want to know the I time. And I think at first glance, this intuitively doesn't make sense, and intuitively, uh, a lot of people would go, I don't think I can do that. I don't think we have enough information. We do have enough information, we just need to retrieve it. So the first thing we need to, re to realize is that the flow... What, it's, what, what flow is telling us is if I have a pipe, now we're going to look at that pipe, and I have gas coming from that pipe, every minute, every minute, 60 liters is going to spill out, or is going to flow out of the end of that pipe, every minute. Now, so we know that in one minute, 60 liters will flow out of that pipe. But that's not what the question is asking. The question is, well, if it takes a minute for 60 liters of flow, how long will it take for just 500 milliliters, just half a liter to flow? So it's asking, well, how long will it take for half a liter to flow out of here and into the patient? And that, I think, um, really helps bring the question into, into more perspective. So we know that we're not going to be dealing with minutes in eye time. I hope everyone would agree. And we're not going to really be dealing with liters in our tidal volume. We could, but the math would just, there would be some more decimal points and a uh, more inherent opportunity for errors. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my flow here. And instead of um, working in liters per minute, could I convert that into a, a something per second? Because we're most likely going to be talking about seconds for eye time. And yes, so if I have 60 liters per minute, can I not divide that 60 liters by 60 seconds? Because there are 60 seconds in one minute. Does that make sense? Hopefully that does. That what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide my liters per minute by 60 because every minute there's, there's 60 seconds in, in every minute. And what that is going to give me is one liter per second. And hopefully everybody sees that. And hopefully you would agree 
that these are equivalent statements. That 60 liters per minute equals one liter per second, right? There's 60 seconds in a minute. After the 60 seconds have gone by, 60 liters have flown. So now I'm dealing with my right units, almost. I'm dealing with seconds now. So I'm good here on time, but I need to deal with milliliters. So I could also say that one liter per second equals 1,000 milliliters per second. Okay? Because one liter is 1,000 milliliters. These are all equivalent statements. 60 liters per minute equals one liter per second equals 1,000 milliliters per second. If everybody's following me there, we're, we're doing well and we're just about ready to set up the formula to solve this problem here. Okay guys, um, I'll pick it up on the next video.